I'm doing this intro with a scarf on my head. Because the first part of this video was filmed last night when Josh came over and I impulsively decided to box dye my hair, something I've swore to myself I would never ever do. I haven't been able to leave my house in about 10 days and I've basically had no human right. I don't want to ruin the reveal of my hair but I had a full 40 minute clip of Josh and I doing my hair but every single time I try and export it onto my laptop like half the footage corrupts and 30 minutes of it has no audio. So I have this little montage that I made instead but honestly didn't really miss much we were just chatting out our asses. <laughs> Okay, dogs look like their owners, but what about owners turning into their dogs? It's the darkest I'd say I've ever been, but like going blonde, I have dark hair obsession. Like, I want my hair darker every single time, and I'm actually so happy with it. I thought I wasn't going to like it being really pale. I honestly don't think I've been on camera this pale in years, but I kind of like it. And I'm also on my no makeup hype right now. I mean, day to day I wear a bit of concealer because my skin is not the best. We all know this. Especially mascara. I'm just falling out of love with it. I feel like it makes my eyes look smaller and just my face a little bit weird. I also dyed my eyebrows black as well. And I feel like that made the world of a difference. I mean, they're pretty settled now. When I first dyed them black, they were black. I used the eye your dye brow in black. Look at these earrings as well by the way. I need to show you these because oh my gosh. This jewellery is all I've been wearing. Got the matching necklace as well. These are Millie Savage. It's not sponsored. By the way, I am honestly just obsessed and I need to get on their website and order everything. You're going to have to ignore the hair dye nails but I feel like they're really timeless pieces but still very fun my phone was stolen by like a guy on a motorbike i know especially in london it's so common and it's also so annoying it couldn't really have happened at a worse time it happened on the day before new year's eve and i was supposed to be handing the keys to my old flat over like on the 31st and getting everything over i actually still have a mattress from that flat like downstairs on my bed so i'd ordered a new mattress to come like i was arranging for that one to be picked up i couldn't contact anyone i only have my cards on apple pay which is such a stupid thing to do i couldn't log into my banking for ages because you need a phone number but i couldn't get a new phone number because i didn't have any money to buy the sim i couldn't buy a new phone because i had no cards i had no access to my bank details i couldn't buy food when i tell you i was so fucked i was so fucked so kindly my boyfriend took me out and got me a new phone my mum has lent me money obviously like i'm paying everyone back but my mum has lent me money to get food my boyfriend also like lent me some money to get food i finally went to the bank and asked for a new card to be sent out to me and i also got my details my boyfriend like came on the weekend and we got an uber into central together so we could sort everything out i went to the vodafone shop and my account is like on my my phone bill is like on my dad's account and they told me i couldn't get my old number back unless my dad was with me like in store my dad is in japan bit of a problem but i've been so insistent on getting my old number like just the contacts like my whole life is on my phone and so many people have me under that number i didn't want to lose it i've been going back and forth like in and out of photophone shops to be honest like no one told me this and this would have made it so much easier basically all my dad needed to do was go online talk to someone or call someone and just say hey a phone was stolen i need a replacement sim with the same number to be sent to this address turns out they wouldn't send it to my address they would only send it to the home address like of my parents so that should be coming today and they can get it in the mail to me for tomorrow well my mum can thank god superstar but boy has it been a 10 days but also at the same time i feel like cliche i feel like it was supposed to happen i've read so many books in fact these are the books that I want to talk through and I never ever in my life 
thought I would become a book girl again. Even in school, like I didn't really love reading the books. I love writing, I've always loved writing. Reading didn't really do it for me, but then I feel like you've got books forced down your throat and you can't actually pick what books you read. So now I'm honestly loving it. I've also had absolutely no access to my social medias. That includes like Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and all the like, I don't post them. Twitter threads, good game with friends. I've literally had iMessage with very limited contacts because it also turns out my iCloud wasn't properly backed up, so and I lost a lot of stuff. But honestly, it's okay. First book I read and finished, Ida actually got to this one. It's a bit annoying, but I kind of like messy looking books because they look loved. It's like they say a cookbook shouldn't be clean. Who was it? Delia Smith. Delia Smith, whose mum's got that big Delia Smith cookbook, incredible. Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I actually met one of you um, coming out of the hairdressers and there's a bookshop opposite my hairdressers. She was coming out of it and she was so, so lovely, this girl. Like, if you're watching this, I kind of want to be your friend and I hope your travels are going really well as well. She told me that she was going traveling and she was going in to like pick up some books. So I had a look through her books and I told her I was reading Boy Parts and she was literally like, oh my God, such a good book. And and I love the way this was written. It's quite like a non BS book. I think this was the perfect one to start out with. I got this recommendation from some of the girls I went to Marbella with. They were talking about it and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Next one I read was also attacked. <laughs> also attacked by Ida. I can't leave them on the sofa because if I like go for a second, they're gone. This was the list and the cover actually got ripped off this. It did have this big lilac cover. I finished this book in under 72 hours i was glued to it but i did find this one ever so slightly more tedious to read it's all about social media and basically a list of sexual offenders or like sexual harassers was released anonymously so like the victims names weren't next to them it's all about this couple and the way it impacts them because this girl ola her fiance was on the list and she's like racking her brains why you be on there for assault it's a page turner for sure but it's very descriptive like it will describe a full page about what he was wearing when he walked into the coffee shop sort of book so if you're into that this was really good the storyline kept me going on this one like i was really invested in the ending it was pretty wild this book as well if you're into like true crime or weird fucked up shit you're gonna love this one. It's about a female photographer who takes erotic photographs of men, um, but also her whole intentions behind it and like how far she'll go to get the picture she wants. I'm talking wine glasses and booty holes. And this one, it's pretty wild. Because I loved Eliza Clark's book so much, this is now the other one that I'm reading. And I'm also really enjoying this one. It's like very similar to this in its themes and everything. It's about three 15 year old high school girls and them murdering their friend. And it's written like as a true crime, sort of by a journalist. So I actually had to Google it. It was done so well. I had to Google whether it was a true story or not. Cause I was like, wait, is this like, actually real i'm really not too far into this one so i'm very excited to carry on reading but i'm really enjoying it already and then i've also been making sure to read a chapter of the secret every day and honestly i want this to be something that i just consistently pick up when i need it i can't explain to you how different i feel and how different my life is going just after three days of reading this book i watched the documentary years ago and i actually always say this to people but i owe like every success i've ever had to the secret i also feel like the word manifesting and law of attraction is like batted around so flippantly and it's not just saying i'm gonna do this like there's so much more to it you need to get your mind into a certain state before and then follow on inspired action and everything comes to you like i literally got every single thing i wanted i got a career in youtube the premise of the book is like you are a radio tower and your thoughts are brain waves and like they obviously emit things and whatever you're emitting you're obviously receiving back in transmission i mean it makes sense people do say your brain is like more powerful than any computer or technology in the world therefore you need to tune into your highest frequency and it doesn't mean like taking control over your thoughts but it's taking control over your feelings and bad feelings are signals that you're not on the right frequency or you're not in the right place you might not believe this stuff but 
please just like give this stuff a read it's seriously life-changing and i'm feeling so good and i'm also realizing why i've maybe not had the best years recently i mean last year was a great year but i'm realizing where a lot of things went wrong and where i was actually responsible for attracting those things into my life i've also been sober bar one day for the last three weeks i think yeah, three weeks, God. Maybe even coming up to a month and I also just feel fantastic for that. But I always say this, I'm not going sober. I'm just a very sober curious person. And I also feel like it's a really good time of year to not be drinking, like have your head really clear. All in all, my phone being stolen has been a massive ball ache. Like I haven't been able to work, haven't been able to contact anybody. All my messages just delete because I don't have it backed up by any iCloud or like even a phone number. I'm feeling so good and just in my own bubble and focusing on myself. And I think it's also really told me that I need to get the fuck off my phone in 2024. I've also been making a million and one Pinterest boards on my house and look, the projects are desperate to go underway. In fact, I think I might even start like taking down the rail in my dressing room sort of thing today. I've had so much time to just do things, like take those boxes out that I said I'll take those out tomorrow and I never do. My flat is looking and feeling great. I'm actually gonna go shopping this Saturday to get cushions for my living room. I also feel like I need to get an electrician over to tell me which walls I can't drill into. But do people do that? Is that something you can do? Or is it just like supposed to be a common sense thing? Because I don't know, but I'm not about to try and blow this place up. I've ordered wallpaper swatches. I've ordered wooden floor swatches. I need to order some carpet swatches. Those should be coming and I can show you those in the vlog. Oh, so exciting. I feel like I just need to go for it. Like I'm so scared because it feels like such a big commitment doing anything. I also feel like I've decided that I want this kitchen to be sage and I want my bathroom wallpapered and pastel colored. Like a, I think I want blue with tiny touches of pastel pink and like a very floral old looking wallpaper and then maybe in the hallway here there's this really dark blue currently along here and i've actually ordered a dark red it's a morrison co wallpaper which is funny because i just actually got a morrison co dog bed so it's very flamboyant patterned but i mean i can stick them all up side by side i was kind of toying with having a lighter wallpaper there because obviously it's like quite a dark hallway but then i thought if i have the right lighting it will just be really nice and cozy hallway and i also want so many different photo frames going down which oh my god from photo frames i need to show you this my parents got me a giant blown up picture of myself so i put it center stage <laughs> Obviously, this isn't going to stay here, and mummy and daddy is very sweet, but I don't think I can keep a picture of myself in there. I, I'm not saying I should hang it in the bathroom, but then I just, I don't know if people will find it funny, because I find it funny, and I know my friends will find it funny, but say if I've got someone else coming, like, what if they don't find it funny? And then they also got me this huge blown up picture of Ida, which is quite funny. Although Josh did say it kind of looks like she's dead, like that's something you do for a dead dog, but she's not she's very much alive and thriving in fact i feel like i should give you a little tour of the living room i don't know whether to turn this big light on i'm such a big light hater but i don't know maybe the room kind of needs it it feels very dark in here obviously i got this big new rug and the floor like i just don't like the carpet i want a dark wooden floor in here i think so i ordered those swatches last night they should be with me tomorrow maybe even today behind the door i've got ida's basket with her toys and her little blanket in that i put up against this radiator she just loves to lie against this radiator it's the sweetest thing and also my new sofa which i love but obviously it just doesn't go with the room it's really hard to buy things for the room when like the color of the walls will probably be changed it's just a little bit too cool toned for me i think a little missy i think someone's feeling a little bit left out of this tour she loves the sofa for sure and also obviously this blanket isn't gonna stay because it is so stark white i have it on my bed but it's purely just here for the evenings and for comfort this lamp also isn't going to stay and this painting here this isn't going to stay either this will go in a hallway somewhere because i'd even love to have this in the bathroom but i'd need to get it put behind some glass because i'd be worried that all the steam would like affect it excuse my nails as well oh my god there's so much hair dye in them it's terrible this i think will stay or maybe i'll want this in my bedroom i just absolutely love this you guys know i go on about it all the time shelves are still empty but i'm just not bothered about that like that is so something i want to do over time and this stuff probably won't even be staying on either i've always wanted my youtube plaque in my bathroom <laughs> 
I don't know why, maybe it's so everyone can see it, but <laughs> that's something I'll be doing. I actually love these frames up here, but once again, I'll just be giving everything on the shelves a rejig. And I also, this wire is the bane of my life. I need to get it screwed through the wall and then screwed through down here, but it doesn't actually reach down into the plugs because it's convenient. They're actually little plugs in here, um, but I had to have it on an extension lead, so I don't know how I'll do that, but someone can figure that out that's a fucking smoke alarm that speaks to you it talks to you and oh my god i've shit myself so many times when i burn a candle because i used to burn my candles here because i was an idiot obviously that's why they moved over there now so when the smoke would come up it was absolutely terrifying like it's like some nuclear bomb warning my big fabulous tv which i wish i got mounted a bit higher because i can't put anything on the mantelpiece like i literally can't fit anything look she just goes into her little toy basket and grabs the toy out. It's amazing. I was thinking that I was going to put a huge mirror above here, but I'm now thinking it will be better to put a mirror on this wall because obviously the window's here, so the light, this room gets beautiful sunlight through the day. It's about 3 p.m. here, so that means no more sunlight today. London, British weather. Why is this struggling so hard with the focus? So I'm thinking a huge mirror maybe along this wall. Um, my plan is big coffee table. I need to pull this rug out a little bit more. I actually pulled it central to the room but I feel like it would look better a little bit further forward big coffee table here <laughs> where this little girl's itching and scratching and rolling around and then I want two armchairs here and here well one there one there you know what I mean I'm excited for it all to come together and I'm even contemplating maybe wallpapering with quite like a sparse like subtle wallpaper maybe even just some texture on the walls i want it really maximalist and i feel like the more texture pattern i put in the more i can get away with like loads of different colors and almost color clashing i feel like because everything's so neutral right now things could look a little bit strange and i want lots of dark rich colors in this room because it is so bright i feel like i can get away with it she definitely agrees i just have these parcels come through the door. Amazon has been the only place that I could order because it like remembers your card details. I didn't need a card or like any bank details to order. I've basically just been ordering absolutely everything. So I'm gonna unbox these. I'm trying not to show my address for you, but first, ah, I need to eat this. I am so, so hungry. When Josh came over last night, I actually made him salmon and rice because we're both on our like good eating. I need to include a recipe at least once in this vlog. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. That was so good, but oh my god, I'm so full. This is fun. It's like a oh, and his warming tablet. What the fuck is this? This looks big. Oh, oh, oh my god. Am I gonna be stunning when I step outside on Friday? Oh my god, this is actually. So, I can. When I tell you, I completely forget that I ordered this stuff. Most of it is ordered at like midnight i got a face mask a dead sea mud mask i feel like i just need thick clay mask to suck all the shit out of my skin quite frankly i feel like it's still recovering from eating all the christmas food sugar for me is the one like if i eat a lot of sugar my skin is just so bad and then i also got a light therapy mask i see everyone talk about these and the reviews were really good this one was only like 40 quid i know that some of them are hundreds and hundreds and this sounds terrible as well i was like if i got like a led mask can you buy like a sunbed for your face which is terrible because everyone says like don't put sun on your face and look a new year's resolution of mine is to not have any sunbeds and i'm gonna be completely transparent with you like i get sunbeds in the past i went through like times where i get a lot but in summer i'll get a few sunbeds before i go on holiday because it means i won't really burn but i'm turning 23 babe also oh my god i'm turning 23 i turned 23 on the 5th of February, which is actually so not that far away. I feel like my face is already saggy. You know, I'm not plump. I don't look, I don't feel like I look young. Sunbeds make my skin incredible. Like, completely clear it up. It's so smooth. All my scarring is gone. Every time I get pale again, like, all my old sort of scarring, like, all of this, there's no, like, active spots there. That's just all scarring. It literally saves my skin, and that's a massive reason why I do it, but... It's just not worth it and obviously all the risks with it as well. I'm just so paranoid these days and as you should be. I don't even think it's paranoid. I think it's just 
actually giving a fuck. So I got one of these light masks. I just hear amazing things, even for anti-aging. I need to plug this in, but we can use this tonight. And I'll keep you updated as well, whether this actually, actually works. And if it does, why can't I see anything? Am I supposed to see something through there? Because that's a bit scary. I'm the sort of person in the shower, I can't close my eyes because what if someone comes in? You know what I mean? What if I open them and there's a man stood there? So, anyway, it's a bit of useless information for you. Pamper night is pampering. I just put that face mask on. I always think the first use of your face mask is the most effective. I don't know, maybe it's because your skin isn't like used to the ingredients, which just works really well. I'm now gonna remove the remnants of any nail polish I have on my nails and also hope that this will soak some of the dye out like they look dirty but they're not dirty they're literally dyed whilst we're doing this wouldn't it be nice to talk about new year what you're hoping the new year will bring for you and when you comment down in the comment section down below right i am like if you want to be rich this year right i am rich because that is how you manifest as i thought <laughs> It has not removed any of the dye, but I'm going to be painting them black anyway. Once again, I got this from Amazon. I really need to go and start getting gels because nail polish just does not last. Woo! Oh my gosh, my wallpaper swatches just came and I think maybe the wood ones as well. So we're going to open them up together. Also this tan. It's quite orange on camera. The palms of my hands are not okay. I feel like I sleep because I sleep with my hands like in between my <laughs> in between my thighs. It always goes onto the palms of my hands. But to be honest, anything to cover that black hair dye, I'm not that mad. I was thinking these maybe for the bathroom. This one is a little bit too mumsy, but I think this one, I don't love the bird. I don't know. Now I'm seeing them up close. They just don't look as nice really maybe as they thought they would but these are definitely a lot more affordable than the other ones i mean i'll put them up in my bathroom and we can have a thing I don't know what's in here is it the wood maybe oh no 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 these are the other ones oh yeah do you see what i mean like these just look better maybe than these but then i don't want something this patterned for the bathroom maybe i don't know this was the one i was thinking of having in my hallway it's quite hard to see it's like a big ornate sign it looks really good when it's like the full thing these colors are so so lovely but i do think this without the purple i actually really don't like purple this with like pinks and maybe like more creamy pinkies for a bathroom would be so nice there's a little bit of a closer look at the wallpapers i feel like this one's quite definitely ruled out but obviously as i said before i originally got these two sort of swatches for like the vibe that i want in my bathroom but to be honest i'm not fuming at them here they're showing up a lot more yellow on camera and also these bulbs are incredibly warm i reckon if i change them maybe to a less warm bulb i don't it's difficult because there's so much for everything to be reflected on this mirror also really needs to go this was above the fireplace where the tv now is but i'm kind of thinking i should keep it for like an outdoor mirror i mean it came free with the apartment so it seems silly to just throw it away because it is really nice or maybe i could hang it up on this wall i'd hang oh God. see it's just too much like i'm getting so overwhelmed before i've even started talking of mirrors as well I, there's a mirror shop like actually next to me and i walked past it and there was a mirror in there so beautiful for so cheap that would look incredible in my bathroom once it's all done up then i'm like if i buy it now it's just sort of going to be sat around where am i going to store it where am i going to keep it god knows when i'll even get around to doing my bathroom should my bathroom be a priority should my fucking hallway even be a priority this is definitely a lot more of what i'm going for in the bathroom but i do you think i should just like add a little bit more color i think this one is maybe a little bit too warm i prefer the background color of this but it's definitely good like it's along the right path and i definitely really like it i just want a slightly different designs maybe colors just made some strange hybrid lychee martini with this and like juices and lemon juice and fucking vanilla syrup basically everything i had and oh my god it bangs i'm gonna listen to ariana grande's new song on repeat and get ready and eyebrows why did i do that i just dyed them they did not need dyeing they would already been dyed and they look pretty insane but maybe by the time i finish my makeup they won't that's what i can hope anyway i was supposed to be due for a period and i did the whole pms thing and my period hasn't come and that's when i always have like the biggest pcos flare-ups but it's nothing to get down about down the dumps about i don't know why i still do because i've had this for my whole entire life 
like I should be used to it by now, but that's the point where my skin is so fucking sensitive. Like I just put a little thin layer of this foundation on. It stings. Like it's done the second it touched my skin and i mean i used that new face mask last night but even like the regular cleansers everything i use it stings everything fucking stings my face but as i said i'm not gonna get down about it and i'm only mentioning this so if anyone else out there with pcos goes through the same thing girl you are not alone i completely feel you for the last month bar one occasion i've been completely sober in fact, I think today literally marks the four weeks sober. So I've technically done my dry jam. To be honest, it wasn't like even really a conscious thing. I don't drink at home around Christmas, which if any of you in the past have watched that story time where I spoke about me getting blackout drunk at a family Christmas Eve party, you'll probably be giggling. I don't know why, I just don't enjoy drinking around Christmas. And I stayed in on New Year as well. I can't even remember if I mentioned this, but I had a New Year, sat on the couch by myself, like not even acknowledging that the clock was going past 12. It was my own choice, it was my own decision. Like it wasn't a sad thing, I didn't feel sad. In fact, probably one of the nicest New Year's I've ever had. So obviously I wasn't drinking then, and then obviously I've lost my phone, so I haven't really gone out anyway. I've also found a new makeup routine that I'm really enjoying. I'm kind of jumping on the whole grungy, unwell, <laughs> looking makeup hype. I feel like I'm seeing it everywhere, but you know, the sort of looks like you woke up in your makeup kind of vibe over the polished. And I've seen it on loads of like trend predictions for this year. I feel really like embarrassing saying that. And honestly, I'm really glad because I really enjoy it. Like I quite like the look of like eye bag and things like that. So I take these three shades. This is warm taupe, a little bit of red ochre and this one, one fresco from the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette, which I feel like I have not picked up in years. And I'll just dust it onto the back of my hand. This actually helps like get an even pigmentation all over the brush. And I'll sort of, feels like really reverse to be doing, but I just like darken my under eyes. Never been a fan of concealer under the eyes, I feel like you guys know that. And even here, where I've got like some natural pigmentation, I just accentuate it a little bit. I feel like some people are gonna be watching this like, what the fuck? But the girls who get it, get it. Drag that along my lash line as well. Plus, any time I've done my makeup like this as well, I had it like done like this in a TikTok. And those of you guys are like, oh my god, how did you do your makeup? It's literally the quickest, easiest thing to do. I also wear no mascara. I mean, look, I'm talking too much. You'll see through it all. Maybe bring it in here a little bit as well. Okay, I'm gonna go too crazy and really look like I've been punched. I'm now gonna take these two liners. One of them is actually a lip liner. This is the Rimmel Lasting Finish Liner in the shade 058 Underground. I'm gonna take this along my waterline and I feel like because it's a really dark purple color, it kind of looks more natural than a black. I feel like I only like full glam on myself these days if I'm doing lashes, I'm doing shebang. Otherwise, I feel like it just, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's a maturing thing, but I just prefer wearing less. And then I'm taking this Rare Beauty brown eyeliner and going over the top of that, really messily. And then I sort of blink my eye together, <laughs> smush it around a bit and it transfers like up and around. I feel like I'm being so judged for this right now, I don't care. Isn't it funny how makeup is so subjective? I've been watching the... It's so funny how we have different preferences on makeup. Like, I've been watching the Sisters in the City podcast, which, oh my gosh, you need to listen to. It makes me howl. It's literally the funniest podcast ever. And obviously the girls on there, Anna and Mandy. Anna was on Love Island, Storm Land. Two days! You waited two days! Anna's glam is a lot more natural now, but Mandy does, like, such a full beat, and she looks so good with it. And I used to be like Mandy, like I loved a full beat when I went out and I'd have glitter, lashes, all that stuff. Like I'd have a cut crease on a day of running errands with my mum. And now if I do that, I just feel really silly. Like it feels really bizarre. I feel like something that's also helped is that I plucked my eyebrows quite a lot thinner. I'm just less focused on changing the shape of my face and more on like adding shadows and looking unwell. <laughs> Gonna take this brush again 
and smudge out that liner. Oh my god, news that the fucking Ace family, well, Catherine and Austin are getting a divorce, came out today. I used to be obsessed with the Ace family when I lived at home, but more so from a I'm gonna watch this shit and manifest it for myself. Like, their success, I feel like, was something no one had ever seen on YouTube. From that freaking house they bought on the hill, where they bought two houses and like, knock them together. When I lived at home and I was desperately waiting for my own YouTube to take off, like I was working so hard. I would go to the gym every day after college and I'd go on the treadmill and re-watch the exact same video, like their house tour video every single time and watch it and like manifest that I was gonna have a house, which I do have a house now. Not quite like theirs, but I will have that one day. Like Catherine is gonna come off the back of it so, so, so well. I mean, it's did my light just die? <gasps> oh no, it didn't. I feel like it's no secret that Austin has been a little bit of a dirty dog and I honestly don't think the allegations are that far-fetched. There's just way too many. I feel like he'll be the one to take over the channel, which is annoying because I would rather it be Catherine's. I mean, to be honest, I'm 22 years old. I didn't watch them anyway, but it's just, that's the nostalgia, you know? I feel like you can see the makeup a little bit better in this lighting. It looks a little bit less dark, but I'm literally gonna curl my lashes, put a little bit of blush on, and that's it, call it a day. I'm all ready, I've put on my This Is A Cry For Help t-shirt, one of my favorite tees ever. I got this from Vinted, so I'm not entirely sure of the brand of it, but I think it could be a Mighty. I'm not too sure. Then I've just got like plain big light wash baggy jeans on with a black belt. I'm gonna layer up. Well, I'm gonna have to layer up or else I'm honestly going to freeze. That's probably Jim texting me. Oh no, it's Lewis. I've actually got quite a good crowd coming now. Oh. Lewis has just said he's gonna get that nine. I'm trying to decide what perfume I want to wear tonight because I want to wear something different. And this one's been in my mind a lot, but then I want it to still smell sexy. I'm gonna layer two together. This is one of my favorite perfumes ever, and I completely forgot about it. Then I saw a picture of it really randomly. Like, obviously, because I've got a new phone, I don't have all of my old pictures. Well, that's not that obvious, just my iCloud didn't really properly back up. And I had a picture of this perfume. I was like, oh, I don't even never wear that anymore. This is the Florence perfume by Top. Tocha? I don't know, it'll be really embarrassing if I haven't got that right. I always spray it in my hair, which I know is absolutely awful. And I will say one thing about having black hair is that it always looks a bit messy. Like it molecules just went in my eye. I do love it though. And if you want to know like how I do this hair, I mean I'm not really marketing it the best. Like this sort of big once again it looks really messy, but I promise like once I've given it a brush, it does look good, like a big sort of bouncy messy blow dry look i filmed a tiktok on it so i'll have that posted you can go over to my tiktok it's just at flossy clegg i'm gonna layer it with baccarat because i feel like this is a little bit more wintry although when i spray this on my chest because it's like such an oily perfume oh i shouldn't have sprayed that one in my hair avoid this one in your hair because it's so oily it leaves little bumps like it gives me fucking not acne but like it leaves little bumps on my chest and then for good measure because I'm going to jail. I'm going to spray this Burberry one. This is Burberry Goddess. This is such a nice perfume. I know the amount of perfume I put on will make some people feel sick. Oh! She is doused. She is drenched. She is ready to go. My first night out in a month. I haven't lost that. Apple piece. juice. Oh. <laughs> Stop thinking it, take a sip of that. <laughs> because unfortunately my sim card has arrived but it's not working and i've waited the full 24 hours hence why i haven't actually vlogged in a couple days because it would have been so repetitive because i just kind of had to stay inside again because everything i wanted to do i felt like i couldn't really do because being in central london without a sim just 
it makes me feel a little bit weird especially after having my possessions robbed from my hands today is a tuesday i woke up i got little bean out on a walk it's so amazing and lovely and sunny and crisp and it's just getting me so excited for summer crazy what a difference the weather can make i got bean out and then i went into town to try and like fix the sim card situation so the sim is in my phone and i activated everything online it told me to wait up to 24 hours and i did wait 24 hours and nothing's happened like there's no signal on my phone or anything as i've explained before my dad isn't here so like it's a little bit difficult they keep asking for my dad but obviously he's literally the other side of the world in japan I'm afraid he can't come into the store with me. He did stuff on his end as well and he got all confirmation emails. So it's all a little bit of a mystery why it's not working, to be honest. The lady in the shop told me that I had another three hours till that 24 hour like threshold time limit was up. And I hung around town for a couple of hours. Sympathy bought myself a couple of things. And I honestly just came back and I'll pop back in in an hour or so because I don't... I would be very surprised if it did turn on. I'm staying optimistic. I've still probably got about another hour left. It could just turn on, you know? But I'm not letting it get me down. I'm not letting it annoy me at all. It's just a phone and I'm lucky that I've even got my card now and I'm able to sort of get out and about, get on tubes, buses, etc. Like buy my groceries again. However, on an exciting note, well, an exciting note for me, a couple of wood swatches came. However, I don't know how I feel about them. This one is a definite no. I don't really know what I was thinking when I got this one. I think because I'm so set on having a dark wood in the lounge that I thought, oh, I'll just order a light one as well. I was allowed to order three swatches from this website. So I ordered two dark ones and one light one. Turns out they're very low stock on the other dark wood swatch. And the only one they did actually send me is so tiny. I don't know how anyone could get a vibe from this size of wood lay on the floor as i've said i do think i want a dark wood but tell me why every single decision just feels like the hardest thing in the world i'd love to pay an interior designer to come in and just be like yeah no but then also if they said no i'd be like well i like it so i'm gonna do it anyway and then still like pussy out of doing it i want a dark wood and i think i want it in the sort of pattern that i have on the floor here excuse me sorry probably need some mop and a little bit of a hoover and the carpets downstairs in my bedroom are also in dire need of change they are something i will never ever show to the internet fortunately a couple weeks ago ida was hit with a little bit of a tummy bug slash repercussions of probably something really grimy that she ate in the park and we had projectile diarrhea and vomiting all over my bedroom carpet and over the entire house for that matter for about three or four days she's fine now don't worry like it was literally just a poorly tummy. The rest of the house, like anything she had a problem on, is so easily cleanable, but those carpets downstairs just need to go as it is. Like they mark so badly. And you guys have seen, I've got one of those proper upholstery cleaners, like one of the carpet cleaners with brushes. I've got every single cleaning product you could imagine for carpets because of her and like having her from a puppy. I'm quite a whiz with it, I'd like to say. Nothing you use, like, no Miss Hinch type shit could get a single stain or mark out of those carpets. So they just need to go anyway. I was thinking of doing wooden floors down there, but it would just be way too cold. And I actually quite like the colour of the carpets. I just need like a better fibre. They're a really sort of scratchy, bobbled fibre that, as I said, just clings onto any stain. But I mean, look, when I show you, like, obviously this is a good size of wood, but that just... That to me ain't the vibe. This on the other hand, I do like it, but I just can't suss out, you know? I don't know if making these decisions should be taking me as long as it does, but I feel like you can kind of see the vibe here. As I said, I did buy myself a couple of gifts just to make myself feel a little bit better. Went into my favorite shop ever, you guys know I'm obsessed with this place. Bought a couple candles. I was gonna buy a really lovely expensive pair of pajamas, but Christmas has just been and gone and I need to focus on buying wood flooring and new carpets rather than £100 pajamas. This candle smells absolutely incredible. The brand is Union of London. It's just like a nice kind of sexy, musky smell and then I also got another candle I'm basically burnt through all my candles I've been lighting them every evening this is a Hagen own brand candle and these smell so strong I'd say these smell stronger than these ones but the 
fragrance of these ones like smells a little bit more expensive. This one is in the scent Black Oud. So as you can imagine, again, just like a nice, sexy, musky smell. I can't hear a word I'm saying because I'm listening to this podcast, which I need to put you all onto. If you're a fan of newlyweds, where's my scarf? This is how my dad how my dad wears a scarf. If you enjoy the Newlyweds podcast, you need to listen to Peter Crouch and Abby Clancy. Their podcast, Crouch Therapy? Crouch? Yeah. Just if you type their names in Spotify, it will come up. It is so funny. I've literally been giggling all day with it in my ears. Just went back to the Vodafone shop. Oh my God. I got everything sorted and within 10 minutes i will have signal on my phone for the first time in like 20 days it's not even being dramatic i was just stopped off by the asian supermarket on the way home i actually wouldn't recommend going to this one because it's pretty bloody expensive this order was like 40 quid which is ridiculous you can get all this stuff from like an independent asian supermarket and obviously it's always better to shop independent anyway for like 20 pounds some shrimp gyoza dumplings I then also got some prawn, squid, fish, and chive dumplings. I got some chive and tofu skin dumplings. And then I got another pack of the mixed seafood dumplings. I also got these because I got the just regular tapioca ones. But these are bubble tea little balls that you boil in water and they're really great in matcha and stuff. These are lychee flavor, so I thought that'd be fun. And then I also got the pancakes, those viral fucking pancakes, which I see Madison and Sarah eating and they get me going every time. I'm not really in the mood for anything sweet right now, but I probably will be this evening. So we can try these together. I got the mango flavor and the chocolate ones as well. These, these ones look the best. It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! How the fuck does she do that? <laughs> I just started to bark at me. My number's working. I'm back in my TikTok. And the first thing I'm going to do is set limitations on my TikTok. It's literally the only day that I was saying I've never felt better for like spending less time on my phone, reading more books. And I've just sat mindlessly scrolling for the first time in so long. And I was like, what are you doing? This is exactly a habit we're not going to fall back into. I know everyone says it, but trust me. TikTok's ruining your life. On another note, it's time. Oh God. Makes me want to gag a bit. I think just because the texture is so bizarre. I thought it'd be like a mochi texture, but it's definitely more of a pancake. And it's got sweet cream and mango chunks on the inside. I'm going to try just a bit of them. What if I try just some of the mango and the cream? Mm. I don't know. Why is that making me... I literally like every food, but... Maybe I need to go and do a pregnancy test. <laughs> that was a joke. I am pregnant, okay? But that just really struck a chord with me. Another day, more wood swatches. This one, so far, I think is my favourite. This is next to the original one. It's like a little bit lighter, a little bit warmer. I feel like this would just make the room so dark. And as you can see when it's not like directly in light, it's basically black. Whereas this one sort of holds like a gorgeous golden-y colour. It will still probably take me about two weeks to decide though, let's be honest. I'll show you what it looks like. Look at this. Wait. Look at this. This is Ida in the mornings. After rolling around the carpet, she's going to miss that carpet so much. I think because it's kind of scratchy. She loves rolling around it on her back. Sorry, I'm sorry that annoying person who just talks about their dog all the time. When in reality, people only like their own dogs and their own kids. I saw this in a Peter, the, the Peter Crouch and the Abby Clancy podcast. Like, people only care about their own dogs. And it's very true. I feel like it looks good with the rug. Oh, okay. Which I want you getting splinters, honey. And... Does it look okay with the Ida? <laughs> Trying to do anything <laughs> with the dog. She's excited though. How does it look with the sofa? I feel like it looks nice. Maybe I should just do it. Maybe I should literally just say, fuck it, and order it. I think it's stunning. I just filmed. <laughs> 
that went everywhere. Sorry, I just filmed some vintage content, which is really cool because I actually just use vintage anyway. I buy so much from vintage. This top I'm wearing right now is bought from vintage. And my friend Annie has been an absolute jam and she has been selling all my stuff on my vintage. So loads of people ask, like they're like, girl, I looked at your vintage and it's not you. It's my friend Annie, but I'm gonna be listing a few things on there as well myself from my own home. My vintage at is just Flossie Clegg. And if you wanna see some of the stuff I'm selling, then go over to my Instagram and wait for the brand deal. Today is gonna to be a really fun day because I'm actually heading all the way to Chelsea, which, oh my gosh, that is such a trek now. I'm going to like Sloan Square area because they have some of the best homeware shops in my opinion. I've got an ochre shop there, which I really like some of their cushions. So I'm hoping, well, I will. This is the positive manifestation reinforcements. I will be walking away with some gorgeous cushions today. It's also exciting that I think I've finally got my wood choice. And whilst I was downstairs in my dressing room as well, actually, I just love the colors on the walls in that. They're not too creamy, but they're just like a warm white, which is what I want upstairs. And if I'm correct, I'm pretty sure that those things of paint are actually in the apartment. Because when I moved in, I remember finding like big tubs of paint everywhere, which would be ideal if I can get the exact color match. I mean, I know they're fire and wall ones, and I know they're like incredible with their color matching and stuff. But I mean, it would just save someone coming over to my house. Like the least amount of people I need in my house. The better. There's a set of bedside tables as well, which I need them in my life. They're literally perfect. And they are on Etsy. I've had my eye on them for so long, but they're a little bit on the pricey side. So I've been a bit reluctant to buy them, but they're just so good. And I know I will love them forever. Like they're very timeless, antique, old. I think they're French and I'll just carry them with me from house to house. I feel like this is so forward thinking, but they would look so gorgeous in a little girl's bedroom. So that even if I have a baby boy, not that I'm having babies, I will still just have to decorate their room like a little girl's room. Live out my fantasies. Let me know your current go-to food obsession right now, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, something you cook, something you've been ordering. This is what I'm having for my lunch, brunch today. Got a couple scrambled eggs, some avocado on bagels with cream cheese. I also always put flat leaf parsley in my avocado mix. It's so good with smoked salmon and some dill. Oh, you guys, I'm back. I've got an Uber coming to drop off um, some keys that I need to get back to my old apartment really urgently. But I'm very glad to inform you that it was in fact a roaring success. I went into the Oka shop, which they have one back home and I've been like browsing online and I love their cushions so much. I think they're so gorgeous and they did not fail to disappoint me in store. Like everything in that store is so beautiful, the way everything's laid out and put together. It's really easy to sort of get inspired in there, which I think is exactly what you need when you're homeware shopping, furniture shopping. My wonderful best friend Josh also came with me and we stopped into Harry's as well to get some dinner, which was so delicious. We got the arancini the zucchini fries and the calamari that calamari is honestly to die for best in the world and then i got a tuna steak and he got a pizza very nice fun unexpected day i was gonna go through the cushions like one by one and show you what i got but i'm honestly just so excited to get these all onto the sofa and also a little bit nervous and apprehensive in case i don't like them but as the man in the shop said if i don't i think it's just like that Yeah. To be honest, I'm really not really not mad at it. Maybe if I bring these forward a little more. I mean, they probably won't all stay on the sofa when it's being sat on, obviously. But if I zoom you out, maybe if I chop it. Is that better? <laughs> it kind of looks like a fox or something. I need to be so careful with these. I know I said I wasn't going to show you the state of my carpet after Ida's diarrhea vomiting episode. But then I remembered we're all about reality on this channel. Oh... My Christ, when I tell you, this is just absolutely, <laughs> my jeans took off. Like it's absolutely everywhere. Under the bed as well, this carpet, like when I tell you the diarrhea was diarrhea ring, it was so bad. And obviously the main thing is that she's completely fine, but like, like there's no return for this carpet. Look, it would have gone sooner or later. It's not that deep to me. It was a 
fabulous couple months whilst it lasted, but yeah, it's time to say goodbye. I'm also thinking, you guys, that I honestly need to do a whole great big re-evaluation. Whether I even need to paint the fucking walls upstairs because now I've got those cushions on that sofa. It's worked miracles. I was even saying to Josh whilst we were in Oka together, I was like, I feel like I've made a huge mistake with my sofa. I feel like I rushed into it. And he was telling me I was being dramatic because it's literally a neutral sofa. Like it's pretty hard to go wrong. And I even steered away from like the crazier design sofas. They've got armchairs in there, which, oh my gosh, they are the most incredible, beautiful armchairs with like tassels all along the bottom that was something i did really want on my sofa but i didn't end up going for it in the end because loads of people spoke me out of it saying you've got a dog like that's the worst thing to do ever like christ can you hear that can you hear the static these bed sheets have honestly made me so static I'm ah it hurts jesus christ i've been saying to my boyfriend, like, oh my god, every single night I get into bed, ah, my hair goes like freaking Einstein. Like, it's so static, and I'm so static for the rest of the day, and it breaks my heart because every time I go to give Ida a little cuddle, I'm giving her electric shock, and it's my bed sheet. Oh shit, like, why are they like that? What actually causes static oh these are questions i don't need to get into i've also got a huge like mattress dilemma now and i don't know what to do because i've been saying for so long like this isn't my mattress this is a mattress from the old apartment and <laughs> so the plan was always for this to go back but obviously with my phone being stolen and everything it just could not have come at a worse time and i didn't get it back to them like in time obviously they actually have tenants moving in the remainder keys that i do have in a uber over to the apartment like that i've been so late with all of that but it's on me but it's not my fault do you know what i mean which usually to be fair i'm such like i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm actually not sorry that a man on a motorbike Snatched my phone out of my hands. There's not a lot I can be sorry for there. So I contacted them the day I got my SIM back, which was what, literally a couple of days ago. I contacted them saying, oh, I can send the mattress back now. I can send everything back. I can like book cars. I can actually get on Ubers. Like I know where I'm going, sort of thing. Like I didn't even have Apple Pay for so long. Like I haven't had anything. I still don't have access to my bank account for a little while. Um, and they told me that they'd already got a new mattress, which is annoying, but I kind of understand. I understand on their part, and obviously like I'm empathetic towards my own frustration with it because I ordered a whole new mattress and now I don't know what to do because I do actually really want that new mattress. Like I'm excited about it. But then I've got a whole freaking mattress here. Like nothing to do with it. I feel like this mattress is a little bit too hard for me. Quite like a softer one, but then what if a new mattress comes and I'm like, oh, I don't like it. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what to do. I know mattress places have like good returns policies. They've got like, enjoy your first hundred nights or get your money back or whatever. So maybe I keep this in my room. But then I, oh, I've already got a bean bag I need to get rid of, which I need to list that bean bag on my Instagram, but I still can't get back on my Instagram. I feel bad because I don't know how to go around getting rid of the bean bag because I want to give it to one of you guys, like who needs it, but I don't particularly want people coming to my house. And I'm sure 99.9% of you are not insane and you would not tell anyone where I live or leave my address, but you want to be careful with these things because you know, you think it will never happen to you. And it does. This is, we're talking about bad things, touch wood. Bad things are not going to happen to me. I don't know. I still haven't figured that out. But what I do know is that it's fresh sheets night because it's a Thursday and I want my bed to be nice for the weekend. I wash my bed sheets twice as much these days since having a dog. We're having breakfast for dinner. I'm going to put some cream cheese on these bagels. This is like an avocado mix I made and it's got avocado, lemon juice, salt and pepper, sweet corn, jalapenos and some feta and some flat leaf parsley and dill in there as well. And then I would usually put salmon on top of this, but I kind of just want to eat it separately with the egg. Also, you've got to excuse my fingernails. They're not dirty, I promise you. It's literally just a hair dye. It has really taken a liking to them and my nails just kept chipping. I really need to go and get gels. To be honest, you know what? I think I'm going to do the whole pack of salmon. I'm a hungry girl tonight. Pop those eggs on. The eggs are looking a little, little suspicious. Salt, pepper, duca and eggs is just so fantastic delicious i'm gonna watch some love island all-stars and the traitors and also grace 
Saving Grace has just uploaded a podcast with Anna and Mandy Vakili, who are like my favorite people in the world. I think they're so funny. Oh my gosh, I'm finishing off editing this video. I think this is the longest YouTube video I've ever uploaded in my life. I said this in one of my other videos of like, oh, no one ever watches to the end. And honestly, it warmed my heart. I was so surprised to see so many comments being like, made it to the end. So once again, let me know if you've made it to the end. An extra, triple, double, quadruple brownie points to you if you have. If this was a background video as well, let me know what you were doing whilst it was on, whether that was scrolling TikTok or doing the dishes or putting your bed sheets on or something. I love you all so much. I'm so excited to carry on redecorating with you. I've actually compiled a huge mood board, which I'll show you in my next YouTube video for the living room. And I think I'm just like pretty certain on everything that's on there. So that's really exciting because I've got a vision and products to like work towards. Currently balancing on a box of Pringles. I'm about to devour a bit of a rogue flavor for me actually. I love you. Bye.